So you're inside the vault, and you found yourself a bunch of these points of interest. You're happily looting through them, finding all the different types of chests, but then it hits you. You haven't actually been paying attention to what you've been picking up, and you don't know where the best place to get all of the items are, or even what some of these items do. Well, I'm here to clear it all up for you. We're gonna look through all of the different types of loot, where you can find them, and what they do. So here we have all of the different types of loot that you can get inside the vault. You have six different types of chests. Those are wooden, gilded, living, ornate, altar and treasure chests and you'll also see coin piles around that you can break and loot the coins that are in there. Now the coin piles are pretty self-explanatory. They either give you bronze, silver or gold. Now things get a little bit more interesting when we dive into the actual chests themselves. First up the wooden chest. This is your very basic chest. You will find them all over the vault and they contain the basic necessities that you're going to need throughout vault hunters so whether that's shulker shells for looting or if it's some of the new vault ingredients these are sort of the baselines of what you're going to need now i haven't included some of the vanilla things like scaffolding torches or bread i'm assuming that you already know what those do but for the new stuff, let's do a dive into it. So first up, Vault Diamonds, Skill Essence, Knowledge Essence. These are going to be very, very, very important for your journey in Vault Hunters. Vault Diamonds are basically the building blocks of every rare thing that you want to build. Whether that's making a pickerang or a building gadget, even the Vault Compass requires Vault Diamonds. And it's going to be the thing that you're going to be searching for a lot through your time in Vault Hunters. They are incredibly useful and reasonably rare in the early game, but they should get more common as time goes on. Now, Skill Essence and Knowledge Essence work in very similar ways. Skill Essence is used to make skill shards, and the skill shards are used to make skill orbs. And skill orbs are used to unlock skill points, which you can then spend on all of the abilities, all the talents that you have in Vault Hunters. Whereas Knowledge Essence makes Knowledge Shards, which then makes Knowledge Stars, and Knowledge Stars are used to unlock mods, which can be found in your Researches tab. So you're going to end up needing these all the way through your playthrough. The next things are your Burger Bun and your Burger Patty. These are two of the ingredients that you need to make burgers, which are going to give you additional experience. Some of the other ingredients are cheese, tomato, lettuce, pickles, chili, and burger sauce. And the more of the ingredients you have, the better burger that you're going to be able to make. And the better burger that you can make, the more experience it's going to give you. And more experience means faster levels, more skills, and better loot. Now, the next set of ingredients we're going to lump together. Vault dust, raw magnetite, vault essence, vault plating, wild focus, amplifying focus, and raw chromatic iron, and carbon. And I guess we could also lump driftwood into this as well. So what is all of this for? Well, it's all used for crafting and upgrading. Vault dust is going to turn into vault nuggets and vault nuggets can then be used to make vault ingots which you can then use to craft new pickaxes or to create vault alloy which is used in upgrading your armor and as you can see here driftwood is also used primarily for making vault pickaxes although there are quite a few other uses for driftwood as well but they're all basically wood-based crafting now there's a few stations behind me that you're going to use these materials in but i'm not going to go into full detail on them now i do have a separate guide for all of these stations and i will link that at the end of the video if you want to do a more deep dive into crafting but essentially you're going to need some of these materials to upgrade different armor and weapons your vault essence and vault plating can be used to upgrade them with some slight modifications your raw magnetite can be used to make magnets once it's smelted up your chromatic iron is used a lot in crafting and these carbon nuggets combine together to make a carbon which as you can see from here can turn chromatic iron into chromatic steel and you can then use that to upgrade your gear even further now the really interesting ones are these focuses foci 
focuses, which can be added to an artisan table. And when you put a piece of gear in here, it's going to be able to change the different modifiers that you get on that gear. Definitely worth looking into and you want to be looting these as much as you possibly can. If you see it, grab it, store it and stick it in your artisan table. Now I have separated magic silk from that list for one reason, and that is because it is used to make a bundle. Now bundle bundles are super overpowered, especially in the early game before you've got shulkers and backpacks and all of that sort of stuff. Bundles are super, super useful. So as soon as you get seven of this silk, you're going to want to make a bundle as soon as possible. Now, diamond nuggets, you just combine nine of them to make a diamond. There's not really much more to that. The regret nuggets, however, are a little bit more interesting. Regret nuggets are used to make these regret chunks, which are then used to make orbs of regret. And when you've got a regret orb, you can just use it and it will give you a regret point, which you can then go into a skill and unlearn it giving you back your skill points and allowing you to pick something else. This is a much better system than having to create loads of different regret flasks like you did last season. Now, the final thing from a level zero wooden chest is this thing called a wooden chest scroll. Now, if you combine a wooden chest scroll with eight driftwood, that will give you a wooden chest, which you can then simply place down in your world and just use it as a normal chest. It looks super cool and being able to have loads of different vault chests all around your base is just amazing. It has a lot of potential. This final item in here is a quark rune. Now you only get that after level 10. All it does is when you combine it with some dye, it will give you that color dyes rune, apply that to a piece of armor, and then it will shine that color. So that means you can have a full set of rainbow shiny gear. If you've seen any of the last series, pretty much all of the Vault Hunters had different colored gear. It is really cool. And if you use a black one, you can basically remove any of that purple shine from Netherite gear. Makes it really easy to see the details of the armor. But that is basically the wooden chest done. Now, some of these specialist chests have things that were in the wooden chest as well. However, I've not included them purely because there's not enough space in some of these. And secondly, because if you want those resources, you're going to be collecting them passively from wooden chests as well. Whereas these all have special sort of focuses. So looking at the gilded chest specifically, you're going to see there's a lot more valuable items in here. Diamond, copper, gold ingots and bottles of enchanting are all self-explanatory and silver scrap is basically used to upgrade the gear just like the other stuff we went through. However, the phoenix dust is much more interesting. What the phoenix dust does is when you combine it together, eight phoenix dust and one catalyst, it will give you a phoenix feather. Now the phoenix feather you can then add to another catalyst and that will give you the phoenix modifier, but it will also exhaust the crystal, meaning you can't modify it any further. And phoenix basically means that if you die in the vault, you get respawned back outside of the vault without any negative consequences. The slight change from 1.16 is that you can still get artifacts in afterlife crystals, but you only get half the XP, whereas a Phoenix one will give you the full XP as well as that protection from death. And speaking of catalysts, the dreamstone that we've got here is going to allow you to do one of two things. You can surround the dreamstone with vault essence and that's going to give you mystical essence and the mystical essence is used to charge up a catalyst and give it different modifiers. You can then add that to a crystal and that will then add those modifiers onto the crystal, letting you run through a vault with them. The other use is to make this Eye of Avarice, which is awesome because it gives you the safe zone modifier, but it also exhausts the crystal, which means that if you use one of these, you're not going to be able to use the Phoenix Feather because that would be another modification. Now, a couple of returning items from 1.16 are the Relic Booster Packs, the Mystery Box, and the mod box and these do exactly the same as what they did in 1.16 except they are significantly better so your mystery box is going to give you cool things like gorgonite gems instead of just sand 
your mod box is going to give me golden apples because I don't have any mods unlocked, but that would give you different items from mods, and your relic booster pack still has disappointment inside. Unless you do manage to get a relic and then yay. You've also got these empty flasks, which basically work as choice flasks from last season, but this time you actually use them to craft the choice flask rather than re-rolling the choice flask. It's really simple and you'll get a hang of it really easily the more you play. You have of course got the gilded chest scroll as well, does exactly the same as the wooden chest there, except it gives you a gilded version. And then once you get to level 10, it will unlock a few other things, Firstly, a key piece. You can then use these keys to open these special doors in the vault and inside of these will be different treasure rooms which will have treasure chests and treasure sand in them. I'm not covering it here, but make sure you break the sand. You're gonna get different gems and things out of there. And the final thing are these vault rooms which can add a common challenge or omega room onto a vault crystal. This guarantees that they're going to appear somewhere in the vault, but you're still gonna have to go and find them. Now it's time for the living chests and you'll never guess what's inside living chests. Dead things like meat, bones, rotten flesh, because of course that's what's in there. Now living chests focus a lot more on progression, so they tend to have more knowledge just in that sort of stuff, but the actual new items are this stuff that's in here. So you do get more burger parts, so you get XP quicker. You can also get vault fruit, which adds additional time. It's got a lot of things like golden carrots and mushroom soup that's just gonna help you out. And most of this is honestly vanilla stuff, all pretty self-explanatory. The few items that aren't vanilla are the vault meat, the withering bone, the kiwi, but as we said, that simply adds five seconds onto the vault, the hunter's eye, poisonous mushrooms, mystery eggs, the living chest scroll, I don't think I need to explain what the living chest scroll does again, and more burger parts and hearty apples. Now the vault meat is used to make this raw vault steak, which it does say you can then cook into cooked vault steak, which is extremely good food. But you can also turn nine volt meat into a volt meat block. And this is used in the Cagerium mod in order to make the terrarium, which is basically your passive mob farm. And it's also used to make botany pots, which is like the plant version of the terrarium, essentially. Basically, it's good food and also good for farming. The withered bone is mainly used to make cosmetic blocks. There's a few different decorations you can make using it and you can also turn it into bone meal. The hunter's eye, we saw earlier it's used to make the orb of regret but it's also a very high level crafting ingredient that you can use to make seals and a bunch of other different items it is quite rare make sure that you are collecting them poisonous mushrooms used to be incredibly good in 1.16 but now the only use for them is to make a choice flask for farmer and then the mystery eggs have actually been reworked to make them a lot more powerful you can open them as you did before and that will give you a spawn egg. You can then use this in a bunch of the mob farming mods and then they will spawn the mobs for you. Cage area, mob spawners, all of that sort of stuff will use these eggs. But that's basically it for the living chests. If you want to be progressing quickly, this is the one that you want to be focusing on. If however you want to actually just become stronger and have much better armor, then the ornate chest is the one for you. The ornate chest is everything to do with crafting. You've got vault scrap, you've got chromatic iron, you've got chromatic steel, you've got vault ingots, all of this stuff that you can use for crafting. You've also got different focuses and vault alloys which are used to craft vault gear. There is also quite a rare chance that you will just find different vault gear inside of these chests. Now the great thing as well is there is a chance to get a legendary modifier on this vault gear which you cannot craft yourself and it's going to be better than anything that you can craft. Extremely good to be looting these and getting these and a piece of vault gear can honestly just change the entire playthrough for you. You also have vault trinkets, these are new to 1.18. When you roll them, it will roll a different trinket for you. There's a few that you've got to go through. This one's given me Elvish Air. Elvish Air? That makes me immune to full damage. So I can activate that. It gives me 23 uses for this one. So for 23 volts, I am immune to full damage. 
And the great thing is, if I go to a vault forge now, I can then craft more of that trinket, which I would then sell to everyone on the server because it's just insanely powerful. And then finally, you have an ornate chest scroll. I bet you that you cannot guess what that one does. Now, these final two, you are not going to find in standard points of interest. The altar ones, you are only going to find at altars, and the treasure chest, you'll only find in treasure rooms. These altars, you will see dotted around, and they will either ask you for levels, health, mob kills, or vault time, so you can simply just finish it, and it will give you these vault chests and boy is there a lot of good stuff in these altar chests you've got a bunch of stuff that we've already covered including the relic booster packs dreamstone phoenix dust all of that sort of good stuff a few of the new things you've got a blank seal which is going to allow you to craft a seal of the hunter to get a scavenger vault an executioner for a boss fight a confectioner for a cake vault that's brilliant and a seal of the challenger which is for a specific challenge speed run vault you can also get vault idols which are basically totems of undying but better this one here has hunger immunity so if we roll a hunger vault then we will not have to actually deal with that mechanic it's very useful and you can get some very powerful stuff from these you can also get an elytra that's quite a rare roll you can get an echo gem and guess what an altar chest scroll the only other thing we've not spoken about is this memory powder now this only has one use and that is to craft the Omega statues which are now insanely expensive. So your memory powder makes memory shards, memory shards make memory crystals, memory crystals and knowledge shards make a sublime vault vision and then that is one of the nine ingredients that you need to make a statue. I told you insanely expensive hopefully they're powerful enough to compensate for that so that is the altar chest it is very very good echo gems from a chest are incredibly powerful as well as getting a couple of other bits that are just quite rare however it's not nearly as strong as the treasure chest the treasure chest has a ridiculous amount of stuff in and we are not going to go over everything here because some of this is from different mods it'd require a lot of explanation but some really important things to highlight firstly your extraordinary versions of your normal gems these are equivalent to four perfect and each perfect one is four normal gems so each one of those is essentially the same as finding 16 gems you can get compressed netherite you can get compressed redstone gold diamond all of this stuff from the compressium mod and you can even get backpacks, pickerangs, jewels for upgrading your pickaxes. Again, go watch the crafting video. Very, very useful and explains all of that stuff. And you even have a chance of getting a completed vault statue. Beyond that, most of this stuff is fairly self-explanatory. The only things that you really need to worry about from an early game perspective are Pandora's boxes, which are basically mystery boxes, but slightly better. You can get completed knowledge stars and skill orbs, and you can even get one of the high level pickaxes already made for you, which will save you a lot of time. And of course, a treasure chest scroll. Where would we be without the treasure chest scroll? But it is actually a little bit cooler because each treasure chest actually acts as a double chest, the more you know. But that is basically all of the loot in Vault Hunters and what it does. I would strongly recommend just diving in, having a look around the vault. These appear randomly in points of interest, so make sure that you're sort of focusing on the points of interest that have the stuff that you want. But now, at least you know what to expect. If you did enjoy the video and you found it useful, make sure you subscribe to the channel and drop a like on this video. We've got plenty more guides coming your way, and we also have some guides already up on the channel. Thanks very much for watching everyone. I've been Hellfire Mage and I will see you next time.